So listen, so every year, all of us Los Angeles members, the Pro Football Writers Association, we have a vote and we choose one player on the team who has been the most professional, most insightful, most courteous when he speaks to the media during the season. And so this year we chose you as the winner of our Good Guy Award. We just want to let you know that we really appreciate the time and energy you put in with us this year and always answering the bell whenever we want to talk to you, but also because of how much insight and knowledge you give us about football and about the Rams on a weekly basis how you're willing to explain things to us that other players might not have the patience or the verbal skills to do. And, you know, you help us understand this game and what it's like to play it. And it's helped us all do our jobs better. So we're going to put your name next to Michael Brockers on the plaque. We're going to hang in our media room at the facility. If we ever have a media room at the facility again, and we really appreciate you and everything you do for us. So thanks very much, man. Oh, y'all yeah, pick me. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> appreciate it though. I'm sure there's, there's a few other guys y'all could have picked, but I appreciate it. I, uh, I have had a growing relationship with the media, I would say, through my through my career. Uh, but it's been uh, no, nah, it's been good with, with you all out here out in uh, LA. I don't you know I don't want to compare y'all to anybody else, but um, it's been good, and I appreciate y'all as well. So I'm glad I'm able to help y'all do y'all's job better and, and give y'all some insight at times. <laughs> yeah, appreciate you. No, it's been really good for all of us. And we just we just want to recognize you for that because we appreciate what you step up as a leader and do for them. So that's great. I appreciate y'all. So uh, from your perspective, can you tell us what happened with you and T-Rap in the first quarter in Baltimore? Great to it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we had a we had a disagreement. We had a we had a a uh, personal disagreement about uh, something specific um, during the game and uh yeah we got we got into it and that was what it was um and uh i mean yeah i guess that's kind of all i will say about it is it was what it was we were able to to move on um support each other through the game communicate better throughout the rest of the game uh give each other calls throughout the rest of the game um it, we're fine now, uh, but during the heat of the game, and both of us want, being super passionate, wanting to wanting to make a make the right call, um, and and put ourselves in the right position for the team, we just we had a disagreement, and and then it, you know it got handled how it got handled, but um, we've moved on from it. So I hope everybody else can too. That's my dog. T wrap my dogs, so right? We we ain't tripping about none of that. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Hey, Jalen, when you look at uh, Debo Samuel on tape, he seems like uh, an anomaly, a, a very unique talent. The way they use him as a wide receiver and running back, what do you see in the challenges of quote containing him this week? Um, it is tough to to do at times just because he's moved all over the place. So if you're not in specific, like matched up coverages, um, they can try to get him in favorable positions, I would say. Um, and he's, like you said, he's, he's dominant in every position that he plays, whether he's at the outside receiver, he's at slot or running back. Um, so regardless, it's a challenge for, for whoever's going to be going up against him, wherever he's lined up at. Um, super important piece and puzzle to their team and uh, just a, a great player. And yeah, we'll, we got to figure out a way to, to limit his impact this week. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Kevin. Hey, Jalen. Um, when this team went to uh, training camp one of the questions was how the defense would handle the loss of some uh, some key leaders uh, from last year's team looking back over the ups and downs the twists and turns of this season how has the defense uh, uh, handled that uh, how has it grown um, you know on the field and and I guess off the field too um, yeah um, it's been a it's been kind of ever evolving um, and it's still growing. Uh, we're still finding um, 
the right ways to handle things, our right chemistry, the right guys to put in the right situations, the right places, how everybody can feed off each other and help each other. Um, it's It's been a whole journey in itself, but uh, I've been pleased with it. I think that it's went well for the most part. We've had times where we had um, hiccups and things we could wish we have done better. We've also had times where, you know, it, it looks amazing. Um, and as of lately, I feel like it has been looking really well. Um, and we've overcome a lot of adversity lately and still been able to, to ball out the, uh, defensively. So I think we have a, we should be playing with a lot of confidence and have a lot of confidence going into hopefully these next five games. Is that, it that answer, you get enough? Go ahead. No, did that answer your question? Uh, you did, definitely. Uh, you said it's evolving. Uh, yeah meaning it's continuing to evolve. Is that a natural thing that, it, uh, you know, you, you don't get to December or January and and everything is <laughs> has sort of reached the final point, but it just, it has to keep going? Yeah, exactly. Um, if we want to be where we, where we really want to be at the end of the year, it definitely has to keep growing. Um, so we'll keep on challenging each other, pushing ourselves to be the, be the best versions of who we can be. Thank you. Gary. Uh, hey, Jalen. Um, I'm sure you've played on teams where you've been able to put streaks at, uh, together against opponents and kind of establish some domination over them. Um, I'm just wondering, you guys, you know, haven't been able to beat the 49ers for a while. Is there a mental kind of thing you guys also have to overcome to, to kind of get back on the winning side of that? Um, I wouldn't say so. Um, we kind of take every week individually, every week as it is, um, try to play every game to the best of our ability, no matter if it's a big game, small game, division game, non-division game, whatever the case may be. And yeah, they've had our number, um, at least since I've been here. I don't know about before I was here, but since I've been here, they've had our number and that's what it is frustrating, but, um, like they don't have like a like mind control over us or nothing, nothing like that. If that's what you're asking, um, it's just how the games have went. You know what I mean? Um, but we going out there confident on Sunday. We're not going out there thinking like, oh, man, we we've lost this many games to them. That's not our mindset at all. We definitely going out there confident. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll wrap with uh, Lindsey then Jordan. Hey, Jalen, just wondering against the Niners, what kind of the keys are for your guys' defense to make sure you guys get off the field? Uh, yeah, uh, making sure we do well on first and second down. So we're, we're in good um, positions for third down and then actually winning those third downs. Um, something I know we struggled with before against them this year. Uh, so it's something that we cannot let happen again. We got to lock in. Um, and we have to execute better than we than we did the last time we played them. I think that's probably about it. And then with you guys having the chance to clinch the division and uh, the number two seed, I mean, is there such thing as heightened sense of urgency or is it just kind of viewed as, as another game since you guys already have a playoff berth? Uh, that's a little bit of both, I would say. It's definitely another game. And we, you know, we take all of our games seriously, honestly, but – uh, it definitely means more because we can, we can you know, clinch the division um, and get the two seeds. So that would be dope, right? That would be that would be cool and important. So yeah, I guess it's a, a little extra bonus, a little extra importance to it, you can say. Got it. Thanks, Jalen. Jordan. Hey, Jalen, um, just did want to share really quick uh, at the top, Greg said some nice things. Um, you were a unanimous vote by our Pro Football Writers Association chapter. So just wanted to let you know that as well. Um, and then wondering how you guys um, prepare for the possibility of seeing two quarterbacks, uh, knowing you guys have prepared for just about every type of adverse or questionable quarterback situation that's possible this year. Um. Yeah, we got to basically, just like you said, prepare for both of them. Uh, both, of them both of them are able to make a lot of plays for their team. Obviously, um, 
you know the talent that Trey Lance has, the number three overall pick. Um, so he has a lot of talent there. They probably view him as the future of their franchise, but right now, and, and that's like a big important thing, like to draft a guy top three overall, and then but you have a, another quarterback that's playing. Um, I guess you could say over him, not like in a down way. I'm not trying to down him, but I'm saying like you got Jimmy Garoppolo, who's actually the starter and who's playing well and has uh, their team in position to go to the playoffs. Uh, so you know that they're both really good. You got to prepare for, for each of them. And they play a little bit differently at times. Um, so we had to watch a, a lot of film, a little extra film, just to make sure we know uh, how each of them plays, I guess you can say. Thank you. Yeah.